Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today for my Silver Swans class in the Virtual Village Hall. Hope you're all having a lovely day. Um, today's session, as you know, if you've joined my classes before, uh, today's session is themed all about love. With it being Valentine's Day, um, just having gone, um, I thought, well, it's only a few days past. <laughs> um, so lots of music, it's all a nice love theme. Um, and we've got a nice little sequence as well at the end just to finish off with, which is to the romance from The Gadfly. Really beautiful piece of music, very well known. Okay, so before we get started, um, if you can just check that your space is clear of any obstacles, just check there's nothing, you know, you can trip over, check the dogs out the way. Um, and also just check that the footwear um, that you're wearing isn't making it slippy. Um, also, please feel free to pop in the comments if you're joining in today. Hello. Um, put in whereabouts you're joining in from. Even if you're watching this later, still pop it in the comments. I normally have a, keep having a check just uh, a few days afterwards just to see if anyone's got any questions or anything as they've done as they've taken the session. So even if it's a few days afterwards and you're only just joining in this session, if you've got any questions, still pop them in the comments and you can always tag in our page as well, which I'm sure Virtual Village Hall will link to afterwards. And, um, and that will give me a notification as well if you've got any questions. Okay, so um, Silver Swans is an initiative of the Royal Academy of Dance and their ballet class is specially designed for the over 55s, but whatever your age, um, if you feel um, that this class is the right pace for you, then you are more than welcome to join us. So it's a nice gentle class. Today's class is suitable for absolute beginners. So it doesn't matter if you've never danced before, this is the perfect opportunity to get started uh, because I will be explaining everything right from the start. Okay, so we always begin with our two warm-ups. If you've joined me before, then hopefully you'll start to know these warm-ups by now. The first one, we're just going to start off by walking around in a circle. If you haven't got enough space to walk around in a circle, then you can walk on the spot. Okay, let's get started. Okay. And walking round. And now taking your hands slowly out. And bring them down and up and down. sorting out my camera if you want to go and grab yourself a chair which, there you go that's a bit better right <laughs> if you want to grab yourself a chair or just something nice and sturdy that we're going to use as a ballet bar uh this is where dining table chairs are perfect or kitchen units as well are also very good um i can just make sure it's something nice and sturdy that won't wobble over so our second warm up now, this is specifically for our feet. We talk a lot about our feet in a ballet class, really want to get the music uh, moving, sorry. And um, cause ballet is very good for improving your foot strength and mobility. So these are some exercises to do, which are very good for feet and we use them as a warm up. So feet together as we're going to face our ballet bar, just take a moment. Check that you've stood the correct distance away from your bar. We can tell this by your arms having a nice soft curve. Remember, if you've joined in my sessions before, you'll know that if your elbows are straight, you're too far away. If your elbows are bent, you're too close. We want them to just have a nice soft curve. 
and your hands should be about as wide apart as your shoulders. Okay, and now we can set ourselves up correctly and we're going to focus on our feet. So I'm going to lift my heel, I've gone to my demi point, to a point, demi point, and down. Same with the other leg, to a point. So I'm just getting a nice crease in my shoes and down. Crease your shoes, to a point, crease your shoes and down. Other leg, to a point, crease your shoes and down. From there, we're now going to point and flex. So pointing your foot in front, we're going to flex our foot. So really push your heel away from you. We're going to point it and ripple through until it points again and closing. Pointing and flexing, pointing and closing, pointing and flexing, pointing and closing. One more and flex and point and close. So we've really gone through the different parts of our feet there. I kept using the word demi point, demi meaning half. So it's half a pointed foot going to a pointed foot. We're not leaning on that toe, it's just resting. We're just going through the different parts of our feet. Okay, let's get started. Let's do our second warm up specifically for our feet. to now do our first official exercise at the bar because those are our two warm-ups just to get us moving. Our first exercise is always our plies. Plie meaning to bend and it just gets us moving. It's one of my favourite exercises, plies. I think it's just a lovely gentle start to the class and it just it just kind of eases you in. It's very nice if you have to have a, ever have to have a very early morning ballet class. Starting off with a nice plie exercise, it's a nice way to ease you in. Um, so, uh, I will just explain first of all about the positions of the feet in ballet. We have five positions of the feet in ballet. If you've done my sessions before, hopefully you're starting to become a bit more familiar with these now. If you start with your feet together, and you're going to turn your toes away from each other, so your heels are still in contact, but your feet are almost like a right angle. Should feel nice and comfy. We're not forcing our turnout. Just nice and comfy. If you were stood on a clock, 10 to 2, 5 to 1. Your feet will be reading. Um, that's first position. Now, keeping your feet turned out, I want you to put a little space between your feet now. This is second position. Second position is it's quite straightforward, but there are a few things we have to watch out for. First of all, just check that your feet are absolutely matching. Check you haven't got one foot more turned out than the other. And also check that your weight is in the middle. Be careful you're not leaning on one leg more than the other. That will become more important as we get round to doing our plies, you'll see why. Okay, let's go back to first position for a moment. I'm, I'm going to slide one foot in front. So the heel of your front foot is in contact with the middle. I'll turn around and give you the full... 360 view of it, um, uh, and uh, the heel of your front foot is in contact with the middle of your back foot. I'll turn around and show you from the back. There you go. There you go. You had full 360 of a third position there. Uh, first position, second position, and third position. Whenever we transition from one position to the next, we always point our foot. So feet in first position, pointing your foot lowering down just like we did in the warm-up just then when we were sliding our foot until it pointed point it slide it until it closes it and that's the basis for what we're going to set our plie exercise around so facing your ballet bar now take a moment check you the correct distance away from the bar exactly the same as we just discussed and we're lifting up nice and tall so imagine that your head is trying to float upwards your feet are staying nice and grounded, or if not, imagine there is a string coming from the middle of your head 
that is pulling you that is up to the ceiling okay and it's lifting you upwards and that gives you that nice we've got some strictly come dancing pants you always hear shirley ballas going on about a nice vertical spine we want exactly the same in ballet okay so feet in first position we're going to take our plies now so plie meaning to bend we're just going to bend our knees and stretch our knees i'll just turn to face the front so you can see what that looks like it's basically making a diamond shape you want your heels to stay on the floor and you want your back to stay vertical spine again uh, we want our back to stay nice and straight so be careful you're not swinging forward so back stays nice and straight as we take our plie and come back up again we're going to take two plies in each of the positions we've just learned zeni plie in first and stretch plie in first and stretch point your foot to the side and then we'll go to second position. Now, this is when I said, just check your feet are turned out the same. Weight's in the middle. It's very important. We're going into our plies. One. And stretch. And two. And stretch. Pointing your foot. Closing it in front. In third position. Same in third. And plie. And stretch. And plie and stretch and then we'll close back to first position let's get our arms moving we'll lift one hand up opening out and back onto the far other hand lifts up big circle of your arm and putting it back onto the ballet bar if you've done my sessions before you'll know that you've just done a pour de bras there but we'll talk about that a bit more later on in the session okay got some music from titanic now for our uh, for our plies, feet in first position, think about your posture. And plie one, and stretch, plie, and stretch now, pointing your foot to the side, and lowering down in second position, take a moment, check it's turned out, and one, and stretch, nice straight back, two, and stretch, let's go into third position, and closing it, same in third, Debbie plie, one, and stretch, two, and stretch, let's go back to first position, We're going to do batman tendus now so for this we're going to have one hand on the ballet bar i'm just going to tip my camera down a little bit because i suspect my toes will disappear off the camera if i don't here we go right there we go that's a bit better so we're going to have one hand on the bar now again we'll just check we're set up correctly at the bar if you're using a chair like i am then just take a step behind that chair and now you can put your hand into the middle of the chair. So this means that your hand is in front of you. That's really important in ballet because we never want this hand wandering to the side and definitely not behind us because it twists your shoulders, which affects your posture, which affects your balance. So feet in first, one hand on the bar, the other hand on your waist. When we're doing back montandus, you have actually already done a back montandu in the class. I just haven't put a name to it. It's just pointing and closing. Okay. So sliding your foot out until it points. And then we're sliding it back into first position now. Okay. And we have what we call our outside leg, which is your leg furthest away from your ballet bar. And you have your inside leg, which is your leg closest towards your ballet bar. We're going to use our outside leg. So if you want to follow uh, along, I teach as a mirror image. So if you want to make sure your bar is on the same side as me, and then you can follow along exactly, and you should hopefully then be using your right foot. Okay. Feet in first. It makes it a lot easier if you follow along with a mirror image. To the front. And into first. 
to the front and into first. We're now going to go to the side, to the side and into first, to the side and into first. So we've just used those two different directions. There are actually three directions we can point our feet in. We're just using two of them today. This hand that's been on your waist is going to go down. We're going to reverse it up in a big circle up to fifth position. Now, fifth position, we'll talk about it a little bit more later on, but fifth position is that nice oval shape that you often see uh, dancers holding shoulders down, arm in front of you. But we're just doing it with one hand because obviously we're holding onto the bar. From here, we turn our head away from that arm. We lift up and we take a little bend over sideways. We recover back up again, opening your arm out, put it back onto your, onto your hip, demi-plie and stretch. So that's called a sideways pour de bras. And it's a really nice movement, a sideways pour de bras. It just gives you that little bit of a stretch in your waist. You want your hips to stay still, the bend all comes from your waist. Be careful you don't swing outwards on your leg there. So feet in first and to the front and into first to the front, so this is your devon, and into first, to the side, and into first, to the side, and into first, release your arm up, turn your head, over you go, and back up, and we'll take a demi-plie, and stretch, and then we'll repeat it all again, so we do it twice, and all the time we're using the same leg, because in a minute, when we've done it with music, we'll swap over to the other side to repeat it with the other leg. So feet in first, if you're using this as a mirror image, it will be your right foot that's doing all the work. Feet in first, let's go with music now. Okay, going to the front and into first, to the front and into first, two to the side, into first position, to the side and into first position and release your arm, big circle, turn your head. And into a demi plie. Let's go again. And to the front and into first position. To the front and into first. To the side, into first position. To the side and into first. Sideways pull the bra. Release your hand. All we go. And demi plie. And stretching. Okay, good. Let's swap our bars over and we'll go on the other side now. Because obviously we don't want to work just one leg. We need to work both sides equally. So feet in first. This time it will be your left leg that's doing all the back on ton dues. And we'll turn towards our ballet bar for that sideways pour de bras. Okay, feet in first. Let's go. And we're going to the front. And into first, to the front, and into first, same to the side, slide that foot until it points, first position, to the side, and into first, pour de bra, release your hand, all we go, turn your head, and semi clearing and stretching, let's go again, to the front, and into first, to the front, and into first, to the side, to your a la second, and close, sideways pour de bras, oh you go, big circle of the arm, turn your head, oh we go, and opening out, and opening out, good, okay, have a quick drink if you want one, I'm just going to come and get a quick drink, Let's go. We're going to now do our rond de jambes. Sounds complicated. It's not. It's fine. <laughs> rond meaning round. Your jambe is your leg. A terre is on the ground. And there's two directions we can do them in. On de or, which is going outwards. On de don, which is coming inwards. We're going to deal with the on de or ones today, the outwards ones. Okay. And I've got a little bit of a test of your balance in this exercise as well. 
Okay, so feet in first, we're facing our bar. It's a little bit like we're playing dot to dot with the positions we've just been in for our Batman Tondu. So, it doesn't matter whichever leg you want to use first. We're going to take our foot to the front. Then we're going to circle it round to the side. We're going to circle it round to the back and then close it into first position. Same again, to the front, to the side, to the back and into first. This is our little test of our balance now. With our feet in first position, we're going to rise up. And if you can, you can hover your hands just off the bar. Just see, you can do it just with one hand, you can do it with both hands. And you're feeling really nice and confident, or maybe you've done ballet before, you can have a go at taking your arms to first position at this moment. You've got your ballet bar there to grab hold of it again if you want to. And of course, you don't even have to let go of the bar at all if you don't want to. And then we'll lower back down. And we'll repeat with the other leg to the front, to the side, to the back, and into first, to the front, to the side, to the back, into first position. We rise. You can have a little test. My balance wasn't in the right place just then. I'm back down. <laughs> um, so obviously balance is always work when we've got, when we get a little bit, you know, think about your physics. Uh, obviously we want that balance to be absolutely central. Um, so be careful that your back isn't arching, or you're not too far forwards. Uh, vertical spine coming in again. We want our legs to stay nice and strong. Now, if you are finding it very wobbly, sometimes, well, actually most of the time, wobbliness comes from your ankles, which is why we work a lot on ankle strength in ballet classes. Um, so if you're newer to this, what I recommend doing is just going into what we call a quarter point. Now, if you remember, I said demi point at the start of the class, and it was when we were doing that exercise where we were going through our feet. And I said demi meaning half. So if we were to rise all the way up to our demi point, that would be us with our ankle absolutely locked in position. We've got that nice crease in our shoe. Of course, we're not going all the way up to the tips of our toes because we don't have point shoes on. So we're going to a nice crease in our shoe and down. But that requires so much strength and stability in the ankle and a really good understanding of whereabouts the line is going through in your foot. So what we can use as a training position is our quarter point. So it's just a little lift of your heels. And what that does is keeps your ankles really nice and secure. And then you can lower back down again. It's a very strengthening position. You can't really go too wrong in a quarter point. Uh, just a little lift and back down again. Just one thing to watch out for when you do take a rise is make sure that your ankle is tracking in a nice straight line. I'll just get this, this leg out of the way. There you go, you can see on this one. We don't want to roll outwards and we don't want to roll inwards. Imagine there's a line going straight down through, through the middle of your ankle and into the middle of your foot, okay? As we take that little rise. So don't roll onto your little toes and don't push onto your big toes. Add weight between your second and fourth toes. Keep it nice and squared. Let's do our rond de jambes with that little test of your balance. Feet in first. By the way, as well, don't worry too much. Some days your balance just isn't that. So don't be too harsh on yourself if you find you're very wobbly. Some days it can happen even for professional ballet dancers. One day your balance is amazing. Next day you wake up completely gone. Day afterwards, it's back again. Feet in first. <laughs> into first position, same again, to the front, to the side, to the back, and into first, Let's take that little rise, and if you want to have a little test of your balance, you can do, and we'll lower down, okay, now let's go with the other leg, feet in first, and going to the front, to the side, so we're keeping that leg nice and straight all the time, we're making like a capital letter D shape on the floor. Semicircle into first position, and let's have another go at that rise. Ankle in a nice straight line. You can have a little test. Bar's there to catch you if you need to get hold of it again, and back down to finish off. Okay, good. Right, so. 
Let's do our Grom Batmons now. Um, we have done these before. If you've joined in my sessions before, hopefully you'll know this exercise. One hand on the bar, check you've got yourself set up correctly, hand in front of you, other hand on your hip. It's an extension of our bat montage, so we're pointing our foot in front, it lifts in the air, it points, and we close it in. Have a go with the other leg, and lift, and point and close. So I'm keeping my legs straight all the time, well both legs are staying straight actually. Now we're going to connect together the first two movements until we get a swish, point, close. Swish, point, close. And that is a grand bat mom. swish, point close okay so we're going to take three with our outside leg a demi plie three with our inside leg and a demi plie let's just have a quick practice swish and a point and a close and a wait second one point and close and wait it goes straight forwards and point and close plie and stretch other leg and a point and a close and no weight keep lifting up that's the secret to a grand bat mom and third one point and close demi plie and stretch let's go with music and swish and a point and a close swish and a point and close keeping those legs nice and straight Let's go with the other leg. And one, and a point in the close. Two, third one. And plie. Good. Have your bars away, have a quick drink of water, and then we're going to come into the center. Okay. Okay, so a quick drink. Hello everyone who is joining us today. Don't forget if you add, add in the comments where else you're joining in from. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Is this your first Silver Swans class? Is it your first ballet class? Have you done ballet before? Um, it's always lovely to hear where else everyone's joining in from. Okay, hopefully everybody's back now from their drink and putting their chair away. We're going to now do a Batman Tomju exercise. Now, normally we come into the middle and do a port de bras first, but we're doing something different today. Um, because actually I've put the port de bras in as part of the sequence that I've choreographed to finish off with. So we're going to do our Batman Tomjus. Now, Batman Tomjus, we've just done them at the bar. We're going to do them in the center. So feet in first, a little bit more tricky for your balance. So we have our hands in bra bar. So bra bar is a nice round shape. It's an oval shape. If we lift them up now, so it's opposite your waist. We say they're about as wide apart as your face. So now it's opposite your waist. That's first position. Now if we open them out to the side, that's your second position. Now, second position, you can see here, it's still curved forward. My arms aren't going behind me. They're not even straight out to the side. It's curved in front, but it is quite a big position. Don't think because it's curved that it's shrinking inwards. It's a big shape, like a, a huge wide rainbow arc, okay? So feet in first, and just be careful of droopy elbows. Keep them nice and lifted, okay? So we're going to do this entire exercise with our arms in second, well, with a little release in them as well. Um, but the reason why second is useful is because uh, I always say to my own silver swans, think like a tightrope walker. You know, they have their arms nice and wide and you know, they might be holding uh, like a big stick in front of them. They hold it in front of them. There's a reason behind that because it helps with your balance. It's exactly the same reason as what I've just been saying for keeping your arms in front of you when you're doing this exercise. So. We're going to take our back montages to the front and close. To the front and close. Let me move back a little bit again. So as you can see, it's just that pointing. 
and closing, pointing and closing. Now we're going to go to the side and do what we call a transfer of weight. So point your foot to the side, lower it down and we should now be in second position. This is tricky, check your feet are turned out the same. Transfer your weight so your other foot points, close into first and your arms are going to come back out here. Or the leg to the point, to the front, one. And close and weight to the front. And close to the side, lower it down and point and close to finish off. If you want to, you can leave your arms in second all the time throughout the exercise, but I just like to put that little release in because I know your arms can. <laughs> gets, gets a bit heavy sometimes with your arms in second all the time. So that's why I just put that little paw de bras in, which we'll talk more about paw de bras in, um, in a moment. But let's just get our legs moving in the center with some Batman tendus. So feet in first. Arms to second. And we're going to go to the front. And close. To the front. And close. Let's go to the side. Lower it down. And to the side. Closing in. Re-prepare. And to the front. And close. Keeping your weight forwards. Arms in front. To the side. Lowering down. And front. To finish. Okay. Good. Um, so, on to our little sequence. Now, I, if you've done my sessions before, you'll know that I always like to finish off with a bit of a sequence. Whether it's repertoire from a ballet or whether it's something I've choreographed. Um, it just kind of puts together... Um, a few elements we've learned today and some new bits as well. So we've had quite a big emphasis on our arms today and that, kind of, that will kind of continue in this piece of uh, choreography. As I said at the start of the session, it's to the romance from The Gadfly. Beautiful piece of music, very famous, you probably know it when you hear it. Um, and we're going to really work on our arms. So I kept using this word pour de bras throughout the class today. Pour there means carriage of and your bra is your arms. So let's just go over the arm positions in a little bit more detail. We've already discussed just now arms in bra bar. That nice oval shape, elbows to the side, hands about as wide apart as your face. First position is your hands opposite your waist. Second position is your arms out at the side. If you go back to first position for one moment and we take our arms all the way up, we've already discussed fifth position as well today. And fifth position, we want to have it just slightly in front of us, exactly the same as in second. In ballet, we never let our arms go behind us. Again, because it makes you twist and then it affects your balance. Hopefully you've seen a bit of a theme here now <laughs> that we don't like to have our balance disrupted in ballet. So arms are slightly in front of you. We say that it's opposite your hairline. Okay, so it's not directly up above you. There's only two instances really when we'd use our arms directly above our head and that will be if we're turning or jumping. Neither of which we're doing today. Um, but just a little fact for you there. That's the only times we would really use our arms directly up. Okay, arms are, would be a little bit more in front of you if you were taking it as a port de bras, as we are. So feet in first position. And we're going to begin by taking a pour de bras just with one hand. So let's use our right hand first. First, two fifth, opening it out to second and down to bras. Other hand to first, two fifth, opening out and down. From here, I'm going to, I'll come close to the screen just to show you this now. Okay, your arms are going to come to be wrists crossed in front. Now, wrists crossed, you probably recognize that from having seen it in images of Swan Lake. Um, we have some arm positions in ballet that just don't have a name. This, these are some of them. We literally just call it wrists crossed, but I nickname it Swan Lake Arms. All my silver swans know, as soon as I say Swan Lake Arms, we know what it is. <laughs> so we go to our Swan Lake Arms. From here, we're going to lift them all the way up and out. And then we'll take some walks coming forwards. One, two, and close your feet into first. Now you notice there that in ballet, 
we always walk with our big toe leading. Our big toe leads. Okay. Makes it a lot quieter and a lot softer as well. And also it looks nicer as well. Rather than, a, you know, imagine a dancer in beautiful tutu walking around with her feet flexed. It, ju it just wouldn't work. So that's why we always walk with stretched feet on every on every walk. It lengthens out the look of the leg. So feet in first. Let's go from the very beginning. So you might want to move a little bit further back for this exercise, well, for this little sequence. Right hand first, two fifths, opening out and down. Other hand, arm first, two fifths, opening out and down. We cross our wrists and we open them out. Dun, bum, 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 and we walk and walk, feet into first, and then we repeat again. So this is our paw de bra opening. Da 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 dum da dum da dum da 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 da, and wrist crossed, and we open them out. But then it's going to change. So let's just do up to there with music. Uh, then, uh, I mean, uh, you had my singing along with it, but I'm sure you don't want to perform it to my singing. I'm sure you'd much rather do it to the beautiful piano trap. So feet in first position, hands in brava. <laughs> to adapt anything in the session, you know, say you've got a bad shoulder or anything, just keep your arm nice and low if you want to. So for example, when it comes around to this, you might just want to open your arms out low rather than taking them all the way up and out. Always feel free to adapt to anything. From here, so the moment whereabouts I've just said it's changed, we've just opened our arms out. Instead of taking walks forwards, because otherwise we'll end up going into our laptops, we're going to loop around to go back to the middle. Okay, so as we've opened out, we're going to walk around. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to walk, whichever direction, walking around, and then we'll finish with our feet in first, exactly where we started. From here, the music changes a little bit, and we're going to put a bit of a pattern into our walks. When we go to the right, we're going to use the right foot. When we go to the left, we're going to use the left foot. We're making like a zigzag shape on our floor. Three walks to the right, right, left, right. When we go to the left, oh, my head has just disappeared behind a the logo there. <laughs> left, right, left, okay? So right, left, right, left, right, left. And there's a moment's pause in between. I'll come back to that in a moment. So we're going to go right, left, right. Then we're going to the left, right, left okay but as we go between those two sides we're going to add in a free pour de bras okay and what i mean by that is it might be something that you've done in today's session it might be something that the music makes you respond that you know that the beautiful music you know it's like makes you feel as though you want to extend an arm out if the music might make you want to take another full pour de bras anything is Correct. There is nothing that you can do wrong because it's your response to the music. It's what we describe as a free pour de bras. Okay, so right foot lead. So we're going to go one, two, three, 
close your feet into first and then a free arm position. You might want to reach one arm out. Like I said, you might want to take both hands up. You might want to go back to this wrists crossed again. We go to the left, left, right, left. Anything you want. Okay. Could we pick that up in music, please? Okay. So we've just done our little warps coming round. So there's this new section that we've just come up to here where we've got our three walks, three pas de bar for our three walks, three pas de bras. Okay, feet in first position. I'll move this way so I'll stop disappearing behind the uh, Royal Voluntary Service logo. <laughs> okay. And off we go, going to the right. One, two, three. Any arm you want to. And let's go to the left. Right, left, and opening out. Okay, from here, I'm going to teach you a new arm position. It's called third arabesque. Now, third arabesque is one arm about the height of the bridge of your nose, and one arm that is shoulder height, and your hand are as, hands are as wide apart as your shoulders. Okay, and it's a very uh, expressive position. If you think back to the very, very early images of ballet dancers, think that you're Mary Taglioni, the beautiful paintings, a lot of them, in the romantic ballet style we call it, we have the, they have the arms like this, looking very sylph-like, very ethereal, and it's the third arabesque. Okay, so it's a beautiful moment for us to take our arms out to our third arabesque, and then we're going to go back round to the beginning again. And we repeat again from the start, one hand, the other hand, wrist crossed, opening out, we take some walks coming forwards and then to finish off we're going to bring our arms to our swan leg position, you can even point your foot in front if you want to and that's our ending position. So you can see we've got, like I say, it's a bit more of a longer pour de bras sequence this, we've got our pour de bras opening out and down, three little walks, then we repeat it again. And then in the middle of it, we have that little walking zigzag pattern. Let's have a go with music now. Uh, I'll be dancing it along with you. If you feel so you want to have another go with it, don't forget you can always rewind back on these sessions afterwards. Um, and uh, let's enjoy dancing our little pour de bras, longer pour de bras sequence today to Romance from the Gadfly. So feet in first. <laughs> Okay, arm first, two feet, opening out and down, other hand first, two feet, opening out, okay let's bring our arms to our wrists crossed, and we open them out, you can take them out to your audience if you want, and walking forwards, feet in first position, let's go again, and first, two feet, opening up, feel like this arm is like, like a beautiful flower that's opening, arm first, two feet, opening up, reach it out, and down, wrists crossed, and opening out your body. However you want to take that, let's walk round. We'll get ready for that little zigzag sequence. Give yourself a bit more space. We're going to go to the right. Off we go. Three walks. Right, left, right. Any arm position you want. And three walks. One, two, three. Any arm position. Okay, now let's all go step. Romantic third position, third arabesque. Very ethereal arm shape. Let's go back round to the beginning. One last time from the start. Are we ready? Right hand, walk. Opening up. Other hand. Lifting up, opening out, and down, wrist crossed, and opening out, and let's walk forwards, walking forwards, 
wrist locks. Point your foot in front if you want to. Okay, good. Very nice. <laughs> Let's finish off now with our cool down. So, um, in the middle of the cool down, we'll pop our curtsy in there. So you can pop your foot at the back if you want to take your curtsy. If you find that position isn't stable enough, then you can always take it with your feet in third. If we've got any gentlemen joining in today, you can always take a bow as well. I'll tell you when to our oh, curtsy and bow moment appears in the cool down. In the meantime, feet together, let's just focus on our breathing. <laughs> Breathing out, breathing in and out, breathing in and out. Feet into first position, curtsies and bows. Curtsies and bows. Okay, let's walk around just like we did at the beginning, just focusing on your breathing. Breathing out, breathing in, and breathing out, breathing in, and out, and breathing in, and breathing out. Okay, well done everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the session um, and I hope to see you next time in the Virtual Village Hall. Bye, everyone.